So is the agenda for today to talk about the two um, sort of draft content pieces that you've created or to talk about I platforms? Think, I, I think the agenda today is to decide the platform <laughs> so we can move on. <laughs> okay. Um, um, and, all right. So in your last email, you said that you're, you're, the ones you're considering are the um, Urban Archive and this um, ESRI ArcGIS platform, which I'm not familiar with, and maybe you guys can tell me about it. Um, and then I wrote back and I kind of put in a pitch for Google Maps. Which is where Alan started about right. three months ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I right. haven't really gotten any further. The so I, do, I have a couple of questions about Google Maps. Mm -hmm. um, if we use Google Maps, can we use the, uh, and Allison is designing a map of Waitley. Can we use that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just you, can, you can introduce an overlay and essentially um, wow. geo-rectify it is the term so that it's sort of <laughs> It's tacked down to real to, to the reality of a Google Map. Which means so it's a, it's a geo rectal map. Is that what you're saying? Or worse. I just had to spend map. four days in Indiana, which is a certain part of the country. So <laughs> you lost your sense of humor. Oh, I gained it. Actually, I lost it when I discovered I was in a county in which 30% of the population has deigned to be vaccinated. <laughs> awesome. Oh, so high. Yeah. yeah, it beggars belief. That's, that's mm -hmm. where Leslie's family lives, is in a county like that. Yeah. Don't go home. <laughs> I know, I, I know. And that's where Melissa Caldwell has moved, too. I know, I know, I know, I know. Who would leave? Who would leave Waitley? Safe love in Waitley. So we can use Google Maps. So, so again, I am the least knowledgeable. What do we have to do to use Google Maps? I mean, what do we have to know? We amateurs. Um, it's well. One of the reasons that I'm recommending it, and you don't need to follow my advice. I mean, also, I'm not. This is the with advice. Oh, uh, we need so your we want, advice. We want your advice. <laughs> <laughs> we need to also look into Alan's ArcGIS because I, I didn't consider that because I'm not familiar with it. I'm, I'm not sure it's going to work because it requires a license that you have to get through the COG. And I'm not sure the, uh, the Council of Governments in Franklin County even yeah. licenses it. So it may not work. And it requires a lot more knowledge than Google Maps does. Well, that Google sounds Maps. great, <laughs> Alan. Does sounds really great. Uh, well, uh, so we could spend <laughs> another year learning how to yeah. be, be part of it. Yeah. <laughs> or, or they have to, they have to provide help. I think that's, uh, that's the issue. Um, well, that sounds uh, like it it poses a barrier to yes to participation to, to execution of the project. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, um, so far, I'm using WordPress and Google Maps. I, I tried to learn Google Earth, but I haven't gotten very far with it yet. It, I don't think Google works. Earth does much for you. It, you don't have an earth-sized project. <laughs> no. and, um, and not yet, you know, we may take over the world, you'll see. <laughs> no. So so WordPress, what do we have to learn to use WordPress? Uh, uh, WordPress doesn't really, you can embed a map, I think, in WordPress. I'm not a WordPress yeah. jock, um, but it's, you'd still need to create the map someplace else. So let's stick with the map. Okay. Um, and before we leave the notion of urban archive behind, I, I have another client who's heavy into urban archive. And um, she, I guess the people who make, who make urban archive um, are, are interested in collaboration. That's sort of their model. And they're open to hearing, you know, about modifications and customizations. Um, but I, it just seems like that's also not an undertaking that you're really all about. I mean, you know, it's like you don't really want to be sort of beta developers. Um, and and the other thing about Urban Archive, the name Urban, it's really yeah. kind of geared to cities. 
Yeah, the smallest we we you know you can drop down their community and review their different communities and the smallest town, which might might be Newburgh, New York. Yes. Yeah. It has eighty thousand residents, and right. we have fifteen hundred. Right. Yes. So um, so the reason I like Google Maps is it's easy. Your user base is already familiar with how to use it, and I think given what you've said you want to do, I think it does what you need it to do, which is, I mean, your needs are simple. So why get something that does more than what you need? So if we use Google Maps, yeah, and it's free. And if we use Google Maps and we have the little pins um, and we want to pin to documents, which could be photographs, that's probably the same thing, mm -hmm. or, and maybe audio clips, um, where are they? <laughs> okay, no, that's a good, that's a really good <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I mean, I, I would uh, speak to me as though I were the four year old, I apparently am. <laughs> that's one of my favorite. Do, do, I will not be insulted. <laughs> Jeremy Irons plays the board of directors, and, and the techies come to, to tell him about something catastrophic that's going to happen. And he says, Talk to me as if I was a child. He says, No, as if I were a golden retriever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, we used to do that in anthropology, TA, and you know, teaching assistants. If you can explain to the average 10 year old, you're good. Yeah, <laughs> right. Okay, so the, the basic paradigm is that um, you have every entry has a location, a location, which is represented by a marker or a pin. Clicking on that pin opens up a pop-up window. In that pop-up window, you have a title, you have some text, you can have a link to more information, you can have a photograph, you can have a photograph that links to a bigger version of it. Um, the, the problem that I'm seeing in the content that you've created so far is that, um, well, two, two things. One is that your sites so far are not sites, they're lines. Especially that. Allen's. And Allen's are not only lines, but it's a set of sites and lines. And so there's a there's a, um, a hierarchy of information in Allen's that Google Maps will not accommodate. That's that's what the WordPress page seemed to try to do. So it linked to the Google site and it allows you to have a kind of a hierarchical I mean, each point, each boundary is a point, and there's a rock there of some kind that the, right, right. somebody has written on over the years, the last two or three hundred years. Right. And they each have a, they might have a history, the overall, the the boundary markers have a history. I'm not quite sure what that is yet, but I'll probably write it. Um, Alan, can you, can you bring up your, I, I just clicked it so that you can share your screen. Can, can you easily bring up what you're describing? Yeah, the WordPress page. <laughs> Yes, yes, the WordPress page. Thank you. Take a moment to find, but it's here. Um, Is it the blogs.umass.edu? Yeah, that's the one. Do you want me to share it, or do you want to share it, Alan? Uh, sh hang on a sec. If I have it easily... Um, where is my page? I'm not sure I have... Hang on a sec. Let me. Uh... Do you want me to share it or do you have it? I almost got it. Hang on. Just okay. log into blogs. I'm at a good, good point here. All right. Still working on this thing. Um, no. Uh, if somebody has, has it, I, I don't have it. Hey, I'll, I'll share. And you can, you, can, you can speak to it, but I'll, it'll. Yeah find my bloody cursor. Oh, there it is. Yeah. 
Okay, so are you seeing, are yes. you seeing my yes. uh, screen? So yeah. that's showing yes. Alan's WordPress page, Waitley Boundaries. And then in, this, in another tab, I have his, his map. Yep. Okay, Alan, take it away. Little, little points, and each one, uh, if you, yeah, there's a little bit of description, mm -hmm. and the description could be a link to, links to other pages as well. Um, so, the, so Alan, would yeah. you, so you've got all these pins, which yeah. are all the boundary markers. Yeah, each would, one of them has a little bit of information. If you click on one, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter which one. <clears throat> it so should here's bring the Conway Waitley 3. Yeah. Where it is, uh, it's numbering, and um, what the uh, what the stone looks like. And Can we put a, a could we put a photograph? Yes. Yeah, some of uh, some of them have photographs. Let me try and find one. One the South Deerfield on the map. The uh, the South Deerfield label. Wait, Those uh, two. Go north. <laughs> Sorry. North. You gotta go go north oh, to go to south. Yeah. Either one. Yep. Oh, I see here. I oh, see. And then there's, there's a, then there were. This is the one in the cemetery. Yeah. And then yeah. there are links below there's to your links. photographs. Yep. If you click on the link. Oh, I see. Okay, but you can embed the photograph in with that little um, caption. Okay. So the photograph could appear here, I think. What were us all that scribbling on the stone? Oh, sorry, I'll go back to that. It's measurement. <laughs> it's a location, yeah, it's, it's a location indicator. The selectmen used to walk the bounds every year. And right. They, um, and various people would mark it whenever they surveyed it. Uh-huh. So the have there's countries. a crazy one like that on the Deerfield Conway line that's just uh, uh, unbelievably inscribed. Yeah. Mm. I haven't found that. You seen one. that one? No, not yet. Is that near uh, the the campground, White Birch? No, no. I'll send you a picture sometime, Alan. Okay. Yeah. Um, can I show you guys a map that um, I worked on? A Google map that. Um, yes. Now you're gonna have to bear with me as I try to remember. But now we know when your anniversary is. Oh yeah. yes. Okay. So good. I expect <laughs> a card. Um, <laughs> I'm looking for maps. Oh, here. Duh. No. Now I've got to find my maps. This is your neck of the woods. Places, but... Yes. Okay, so yeah. sorry, I'm sorry and I expected. And it's not looking the way I remember it looking. Okay, I, I'm gonna abandon this because it's taking too long. Um, but I made a Google map where when you clicked on one of the um, pins, it, it, the information instead of showing up in that sidebar showed up in a little sort of pop-up. Yeah had the picture and the li links to more information in it. And I'll, I'll, I'll look for that when we get off the call and share it with you. Yeah, that would be interesting to know. One of the, as an aside, one of the reasons I picked WordPress was because it was easily available to me, but also Judy Markland has said the Historical Society has at its base a WordPress website, and she's offered us the use of it for the Hidden History Project. So if we want to put text out there, um, it can link well, to anything. I think we should look into, or I should look into whether you can, it'd be nice if you could bring the Google map to WordPress, if you want to have that sort of narrative page, website page functionality. 
I mean, so now we're talking about the context around the map and how the user gets to that. Um, mm -hmm. And it, I mean, we, I suppose we can just do sort of model it on what you've done already, Alan, and have a WordPress page that talks about the project and maybe a little bit, you know, an invitation to explore it, click here to go to the map, and that can open in a new tab. That's fine too. WordPress does have some map functions. I haven't figured out how to load them yet or install them. Uh, um, okay, well, if you wanna look into using WordPress, WordPress maps instead of Google's, be my guest. I'm not gonna take that on because I'm not a WordPress person. No, no I, am I, but I find WordPress uh, to be deeply confusing. <laughs> I mean, people, you know, it's- You're not alone. Um, yeah. But it's do, free, do, so. do you mean confusing for the creator or confusing for the audience? For the creator. And it, it's not, I mean, it's fine. It's a fine platform. It's just not one that I've chosen to learn. Um, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to be much help for you in telling you about WordPress's capabilities. Is it a licensed thing, no. Alan, or is it free? You can do it for free. There, okay. there may be a free version of it. Um, there is. So what's the advantage to using the historical societies uh, other than that Judy knows how to do some things on it? It's free. Well, it's there. So. Yeah. No, but it would be free if we had our own. She, she means. I think so. Yeah. It, but it would. The, I think the advantage of WordPress is that it gives you a, a sort of a web page with text and images kind of functionality. It's not specifically for making maps. The Google Maps thing is specifically for making maps. Yeah. And you can use them in conjunction as Alan has done. Right. I think that makes sense, but I'm still not, sorry, the specific question, Juliet, is actually not for you, but for Allison and, <laughs> and Alan. Um, it, Alan, so the historical society, so one person, Judy, is using the um, WordPress for, I assume for the website of the Historical Society, yeah. which is pretty, but static. Um, what advantage would it give us to start there rather than start from scratch? I think it would allow us to coordinate with the Historical Society. If you can envision a future where there's maybe where it's less static and there's more going on and things that want to be added to the historical society site, it would be very good if we were all kind of talking on the same page and it might even be the same person doing this stuff, you know? Right, 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 right. Well, the other thing is that all of the photographic uh, evidence belongs to the historical society. Mm. And I mean, you know, they, they, they're yeah. completely happy to have us use it. It just might make it easier, right, to get to it. Well, for now, but we may create yeah. our own, Our, you mean archival stuff? Yeah, yeah, yes, the, yes. Through but this project, we'll be creating our own images, maps, let's say, or diagrams or timeline. Who knows what we're going to come up with? Right. Or, you know, diagrams that show the parts of a house, you know, that, that may be ours, you know, that we mm -hmm. also want to coordinate with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to their website now. Um, if you wanted to, you know, if a lot of the uh, primary source documents that you want to link to from the map are on their website, yes. I mean, you can just ha include a link in the pop-up to- Yeah, actually, the, the his, some historic maps are on the website, but the stuff I'm thinking of is in their catalog, oh. which is not available on their website. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting question about whether it ever would be. It's And it's mass- Oh, it's managed on some, on a software that is specifically for archival and, and museum material. It, it and might be accessible to the outside world or linked to the internet, but I'm not sure it is currently. I, mean, it is I, I know it is not. I know it is not. It sits on one computer and, and uh, Judy, this Judy, you're hearing about Juliet periodically copies the whole thing on a thumb drive and takes it home. No, it is not at all um, widely available. I, I, hope uh, all, 
I hope that, you know, I'm basing my recommendation on what you've shared with me so far, but if you have other larger ambitions, you know, Google Maps might not be the right thing for you. So I, I think Google Maps is okay. Oh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm becoming convinced too, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Alan's I have working some on, with it, so. sorry, go ahead. I have some expertise with it, not a lot yet, but I'm trying to figure out where to go with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Alan is working on another uh, multiple site project that houses of uh, those who participated in Shays Rebellion, which is information the Historical Society has. My other uh, sort of first round entries are all single sites. In fact, they're more single sites than the than the road is, which obviously has a beginning and a middle and an end. <laughs> no. um, and Al Allison, I'm sorry. Really project. So yeah. generally, it seems to fit well to maps. I'm sorry. Well, I still feel like we need to um, wrestle this hierarchical problem to, into submission. We have to come up with a solution for that. Because okay, you do that. I have to. I've locked Neil out of the house. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> um, because really, uh, Alan, your stuff is sort of a map unto itself, and so I don't know how we can get it to play with the other sites from the hidden history map. Yeah. Um... It was a starting point that I knew how to use, so I'm not quite sure how it fits with other things. Um, what do you mean? I didn't understand. Um, Google Maps was a starting point, and I had I had a spreadsheet with the locations that I could plot easily. I'm... Well, but no, what, what I'm trying to say is much more of an editorial content co point, not a technical point. Okay. Because your the map you created it makes sense to a user as a set. It's its own universe. If you took all of those points that are on your map and mixed them in with Allison's points and, and Donna's points, confusing. Yeah. it doesn't make sense anymore. Right. So it, it's an editorial yeah. problem. So yeah. could we, could, in a way, in a lot of ways. Could, but yeah. Alan, could, could you, could we create uh, as one of could each of your pins link first to a two-dimensional map of Waitley showing all the boundaries, perhaps actually drawing the boundary lines? Well, won't that be on our map? That'll be on, that'll be on our base map, won't it? Uh, right. It, yeah. Well, yes, that would make more, even more sense, I mean, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, yeah. I, I, think, I think it needs to be, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah no, that makes perfect even sense. Even for the most basic user, I defy you to find anyone in town who can sit down and draw the shape of this town. Right. With right. all its eggs and eggs. Nobody. Right. Not well, even we, Alan. Well, and not even our assessors, given the, the no. reliability of the assessors' maps. So, you know, <laughs> it will be on our base map. What okay. is your base map? Allison is drawing a base map. Uh, the one we're going to geo rectify. Yes, we're going to geo rectify. <laughs> So, so what you're saying, Allison, is it will be visually available on the on the base map, but well, what, how does what, that what, interact with the with the points then that users can click on? Well, uh, well, let me just read what we're talking about. Uh, um, what we've always been talking about is creating our own base map of Waitley with mm -hmm. roads, rivers you know, geography, maybe even buildings locally, major buildings located on it. Um, mm -hmm. That would be the base for all of these points that we're going to show. So mm -hmm. the, the town line is the same as Alan's, it's the, it's the drawing that's created by connecting all of Alan's dots. It doesn't right. turn into a, you know, cute whale or anything, but it is the connect the dots line. Mm -hmm. So it will be there on the map that you're looking at. So. So his points, seems to me, his points can be located in and amongst all of our other points. We won't have any points that go beyond that boundary, I don't think. No, but can it you? will be confusing if there are multiple projects on the same map, I think. I think that's what Juliet is, is saying, that if we put all the boundary markers on, plus 
um, Donna's marker for the, the road, the marker for the gin mill, uh, the markers. Right, and I thought, I thought there was going to be an element to this where we were having layers, or in other words, yes. subject yes. It have filters. To be layers of some kind. So well, there be multiple maps. You can do that. Not with Google Maps, though. See, that's what I'm trying to understand the scopes of your the scope of your ambition. Okay, can't do that with Google the right Maps. Platform. Okay, so well, Google Maps, the, the restriction or the limitation of Google Map is there is one meadow well, right. locator, and then you. I see. That's interesting. Okay, I need to look into that. I need to look into did you that. Lock, did you lock the dog out of the house? <laughs> no, I'd like to though. <laughs> Yeah, so you're saying whatever we do, if it's Google Maps, you know, if we have 50 pins, that's going to, and they're not all clustered around the town hall, but that's going to be okay. But if we move onward and somehow have 500 pins someday, like if we locate every big tree in town, that that's going to just look like complete chaos. No, that's right. not what I'm saying. I'm saying um, it's not about the numbers, it's about the, the cognitive, uh, the conceptual set. So what, what Donna just alluded to was, uh, or somebody just said something about layers. So let's look at the boundary map. Okay, now here are the dots, the pins that connect with that story. Okay, now let's look at historic, the historic houses maps. And that's gonna give you a different set of pins. Okay, okay. now let's look at the ancient missing, you know, the, the roads, the lost Where the roads bodies are buried. Of right. Whiteley. And that's gonna give you a different map. That's a perfectly fine idea and sounds like fun, I just need to look into whether that's doable with Google. Uh, what I was saying is if what Google right. can do is this one flat, one dimensional, right. Right. every pin is on there together yeah. and it can do that. But I think from user's point of view, given the content that you've created even thus far, it's gonna be a mishmash because we're gonna have you right. know, 15 pins that define markers and boundaries mixed in with historic houses, mixed in with you know big trees, mixed in with, you know, road, lost roads. See, I assume there was either some color coding thing that could happen there, like maybe all of his is, way to do you it. know, he gets the blue pins. Maybe that's the way to do maybe, it. You know, we, we, we have probably eight colors we could define, you know. That's so a great idea. Subject lists. That's one way to do it. Yep. And that's in fact, that's some, that's of, some, of the, some of the sites you sent us to look at, Juliet, did that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The, mm -hmm. And I don't remember which I'm about to malign, but the problem we found was that since they were layered over, and maybe it was Urban Archive, things like the MTA map, you know, with all the subway stops and the bus stops and whatnot, we just, and, you know, every Panera. In the t in many every, every, every clunky, every clunky badly designed Google icon, you know, for food and yeah. gas. So and we won't, we won't have, but we won't have that we problem because we don't have gas. <laughs> yeah. Right. Luckily there are no buildings. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there are no businesses. I mean, yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think. I thought that when but you look at are, Google Maps, if, if you're visiting Indiana, for example, and you want to find a place to eat, that you could apply some sort of filtering <laughs> system to your map. Yeah, so you where, to where, can I, yeah, well, you know what I mean. Where can I get a pizza? And it would only show you Italian restaurants, mm -hmm. I, and not every freaking place right. in the world. Right. Right. Is that not true? That is true. Oh. And um, but the so, question is the question yeah. is whether Google lets you take that you know, marker categorization feature and customize it to your own devices. Uh -huh. we, could just code them as, we could code them as coffee shops, gas stations, <laughs> right. motels, and historical points, yeah. and just change the names. Right. So I will look into that. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, I, I think... I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just, I'm thinking, I, I'm probably not as ambitious as Allison about the eventual scale of this project, but I think- I'm trying to be you're cheerful and optimistic. You're, you're being cheerful and optimistic. Um, it's I hard. Think, I, I think the layers idea is important wherever we go. I do. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, at one point, 
I, I, I can't remember in which conversation we were thinking, you know, layers by centuries. That might not be an interesting way to do it. But in any case, every time we have a conversation, there is a layered aspect to it. <laughs> so, Did I show you the map that I did for, the, um, for PPMA for the dinosaur project? No. Uh, let me show you that. Um, George. Because tell me when you're seeing it. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you can layer on. Uh, so this is analogous to Allison's base map. Yeah. So this is a this is a map from 1857 that you can turn on or turn off, and you can mm -hmm. zoom in. Who was uh, your client for this? The Museum Association. PVMA in, in Deerfield. Um, oh, 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 the Potomac yeah. <laughs> Valley Memorial yeah. Association. And then um, here's another yes. map that you can layer on. Cool. It's, this is the geological map. That's Hitchcock. Yeah. Um, you can turn them off. Yeah, these are all, this is a website about Hitchcock. Right. Um, you can even turn off the roads and just have the topo map. Now, can I just ask an aside because I'm very curious. What did you have to do to get Hitchcock's map, which uh, seems like it should have included the Oxbow, um, to really fit on top of the contemporary map? Because the river that, really that is called georectification, and you, you scrunch it around. Have to, you have to distort the historic map to fit on the present day mapped reality. Did you take out the Oxbow? Pardon me. Did you remove the oxbow or was the oxbow gone? I can't, I don't remember the date of this map. This, here's the oxbow right here. No, this is after, this is after the, the well, never mind. It, it's been, okay, there you go. There it is down there. But remember there's a time when, when uh, the oxbow had not been, uh, the pins on top of it. That's why I can't see it. There you go. Okay, move on. I'm just very curious how you did that. Okay, um, so in addition and, to having la layers that you, that you can turn on and off, you can also decide to show different sets of markers. So right. you can choose, I wanna see places to visit. Right. I wanna see historic sites. And then each of the marker has a little <sighs> pop up here. I'll do one down here. Um, that shows a title, a picture, and a blurb. And what what is this built in? This, this... is custom built and cost a fortune. Oh, <laughs> well, thank and, you. And the reason I'm got grant money. You, uh, the reason I'm showing it to you is that you have to you have to have a moment of truth with yourselves and say we are we're not going to build a custom map, so we're going to make our plans and goals fit what we can get for free off the shelf. I think that's where we are. Yep. Um, I think as, as, as unsexy as that is, I think that is our reality. And yeah, that will I, be, I, I, it'll I, be a relief in some ways to us to, to have those constraints are good. No, absolutely. I mean, if, if, if you said, oh, this will cost $500, we could probably fuss around for a little no, bit. No, I think it's a little more than that. But, yeah, but, no, this but, was a this was a, a quarter of a million dollar NEH funded <laughs> website. Okay. I mean, there was a lot. I mean, the map is just a small part of it. But yeah. Tim it's, Newman at PVA does two kinds of things. He either gets a quarter of a million dollars to build a website for a particular project, but he can't find two dollars and fifty cents to pay the electric bill for the building. I, I was going to say right. replace a light bulb so you can see. Yeah, no, they can't afford can't afford that. And that's <laughs> one of that. This, the nature of uh, funding. No right. well, they, they, they it's don't like the 1704 them. event they had. They spent a zillion dollars on that 1704 website. At the same time, they could just not about heat the building because they had no money. Right. That's right. Yeah. Because that's not but, what grants are given out. But they're merging, oh, right, right. They're, they're merging with their big neighbor next door. So they are. Um, oh, you think so, huh? I thought they were merging with Historic Deerfield. I think that's a perennial fable. Okay. Never anyway, mind. Yeah. Several so people need to be shot. Yeah. So we have to. So we have to. 
that we have to work with Google Maps. And if we, if we hadn't, and maybe we have to figure out a way, Alan, not, well, Juliet is gonna look into whether we can do a drop down layers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as part of the intro, that would presumably be one of the first things mm -hmm. you would encounter. Um, okay. If we can't, then what do we do? Well, it's, um, you know, the other, other question I would ask is, it seems like, and no offense, Ali, because I think your project's really great. It too. seems like this marker thing is the, is the square peg that we are trying That's to fit I, into our yes. right hole, you know? Yeah. Is, there, is there some way to, yes, yes, person in the front row? Finish your thought, finish your thought I'll go next. <laughs> no, no, is there no, some no. way to rejigger what he's done so that, then I'm just throwing this out there, so that maybe just like, instead of, I don't know how many markers you have, 20 markers, instead of 20, there's the four best ones show up on our map and then they link somehow to the overall project. If you're really interested, you see the other ones in some mm -hmm. other way. What I was gonna suggest is a different approach. Um, what if we had an introductory WordPress page or some web page? it's not a map, and it just lists, you know, we, we've created, you know, Four, I'm just going to come up with this number, different maps for you to explore. Click here if you want to explore the maps, uh, the map that shows the boundaries. Click here if you want to show, explore the map that shows, you know, the lost roads of Waitley. Click here to look at the historic homes of Waitley. And they're just separate maps. And they're offered on one menu. So we ought to think, um, that's I, like that. I like that idea. Yeah, that's because okay. I, I like, I like keeping the integrity of, um, Alan's project, since our select board apparently has lost their responsibility <laughs> to, to own it. What? But um, they're supposed to walk it every year. Oh, yeah, gonna be, he's made it so they can walk it virtually. Which yeah. happened, yes, exactly. Somebody exactly. wants to take the pictures, yep. Well, um, so sorry, George is now in my lap. He finds this so interesting. That's, that's <laughs> a geocaching um, but, aspect to this. But maybe what we need to do, um, Alan and Allison and I, is to be a little less casual about what our categories will be. I mean, for example, I will say doing the historic homes would be an enormous undertaking because there are three or 400. I was gonna say, which houses does that not include? Exactly, exactly. Which include so we so we will not be doing yes, we'll make the map these are the three houses that are not historic homes hey, they no, are no, no. <laughs> so the, the original project was the shades were building in houses most of which are destroyed they're gone there's only so that's a downer that's not a happy story no but they exist but there are a couple but there are a couple and and, this and is where they lived. that sounds like another map shades rebellion sites yeah. yeah, and and the the nice thing that our friend Derricka Smith discovered through her research is that the Shays Rebellion affiliations were not um, through families; it was neighbors. Mm -hmm. There were little little clusters of houses where all the guys joined, <laughs> and then they did, mm -hmm. you know, which which apparently wasn't true in every town. Huh. Um, no, we we were unusual. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, but I think. Does that make sense that we need to think more instead of in the abstract, but what would these layers be? I mean, for example, the Lost Roads of Waitley. I spent hours last year, including with an enormous notebook of an unfinished project someone in the town had started trying to figure out which roads have been lost. Yeah. And besides Mother George Road, for which there is a fair amount of, you know, enough information, it's mostly a couple of roads that go up behind Quan Quan, you know, up Mount Esther. And so that wouldn't be a map. I think it's too hard. And I we're think. not putting that one in here. I can tell you that right now. Because you don't want people on at your road. You well, don't it's want lost. For one thing, you can't, it's there's lost. nothing to see. It's, it's lost. A field. It's lost. Yeah, it's exactly. It's a field that, that, that's now disappeared. You know, it's like saying. Um, right. So yeah. what might some of the other layers be? Well, this is a discussion that I think may, we don't need to w use up a lot of your time with, because I yeah. think there's a bunch, there's a couple different ways to look at it. One is 
Well, this is like what Donna is saying with these sort of um, encyclopedia headings of, um, you know, Shays Rebellion, um, you know, World War II, town boundaries. But another way to think about it is that, that I kind of want to explore with you guys is thinking about it in terms of pack packaging these things for marketability. And so instead of it sounding, um, you know, like some kind of dreadful 1950s history lesson, we want it to sound like we're exploring and discovering things. So the Lost Roads of Waitley sounds much more intriguing than Waitley Roads, history right. of Waitley Roads, you know. Right, 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 right. And, right. and, and, and so we, but we need to talk about that a little more. And, and it's right. going to be a combination of how can we make this interesting and attractive and possibly even timely? Like we could do Olympic athletes of Waitley. We should be doing that one now. It'll be a very short project. <laughs> but you know that might have been something we thought we should do. Um, well, and, and, and we, we have can't... we have the we, we have the anniversary of the revolution coming up too, and I think we ought to try to organize something for that. You know, it's not that far away. Right. right. That we can then promote through the town and get people excited about looking at this website. You know, in terms right. of contemporary history. Right. And, and so and... we need we need to explore that. Because yeah. you want me to work on something and I'm happy to do that. I don't have a burning topic in my mind that I've just been waiting and dying to do, but I'd be happy to be pointed in some direction and say, okay, you want to look at, you know, big trees of Waitley? Uh, fine. I'll, I'll look into that. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, lost, lost lesbians of Waitley. I'll do that one. <laughs> we'll put Donna's house on the map. That's right. That's yeah. right. Uh, my, <laughs> my house belonged to the misses, and I've done their really? own. We'll do the we'll, we'll do the Waitley Pride page. I think that Ms. would get a lot Lily of attention. And Ms. Smith, and Ooh. they were lovely. I'm very sad that I never met them. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so it sounds oh, like you guys have some content development brainstorming do. to do. We do. Well, we're we coming at this from five different directions, Julia, and one of them has to be like. How does this website going to work? What is this map thing? Well, what can we do? You know, what can always, we do? It's always like that. That's the nature of this medium is that yeah. it's, a, it's a dance between content, technology, and design, and they all are informing each other. And you can't do well, one without we, the other. We're really enjoying that. But, but it, it, that's why we can't give you hard, fast answers to some of this. Because we have here. lots and lots and lots of ideas. We are not short on ideas. We just need, right, to yeah. fo we need focus and a plan. Right. Well, that's I, what design is going to help you with. As you know, design helps people structure their thinking and sometimes. it'll also inform what technology right. makes is the best choice for you. Right, right. Well, and the other practical limit, the practical target we have is that we originally started doing this to be part of the town's 250th, which <laughs> has fortunately been pushed forward for a year um, till <laughs> next till next June, more or less, as the yeah. culmination. Um, and if we figure out more precisely what we're going to do and realize that it will cost us some money, we have been promised some money oh, true. From, the, from their coffers, but we, we then Not have a quarter to- of a million. <laughs> no, but I think we should make think, every think, effort think, to spend their I money. Was, I think I was floating around $500, yeah. you know, something right. like that, you know, but. Um, yeah. well, uh, the, other, the other thing is that the other beauty of the web is that you can launch it, you know, and have a big fanfare and it, it can be not done. Right. Yeah. Except what we don't want to do, I think Alan went to a, a Preservation Massachusetts workshop a couple of weeks ago and uh, that talked about various towns projects. We don't want to be, I think it was long meta where every interesting link clinged to under development. Yeah. You know, I just don't put it up there if it's under be very unsatisfying. Do not do that. No, you have to have a satisfying critical mass of information. It has to be at the end of it. Yeah. yeah. So, but but in the end, Donna, it doesn't have to be that much information. It doesn't have to be finished. I mean, I'd be happy. doesn't want to see 28 things. You know, no, if we had if we had ten things and a shape to it, more it than they can handle, right. I'd feel right. we did our thing. It's better than the plastic birthday cake. Well, right, and, and any no, money we take away from the mummers is fine with me. Nobody yeah. needs to know that those ten things are actually subset of fifty things that you're gonna have. Right, and you turn that to your advantage and say, check back next month. We're gonna have ten more. Right. 
So, mm-hmm. so I think whether whether Julia, whether we think we eventually would have three layers or eight, I, I, um, I think have if you can get us the answer to the simple question, can we layer in Google Maps? Mm-hmm. Okay, that would be hugely helpful. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll look um, into that today. Oh. And, you know, the other thing is you can always add layers, you know, next year, Alan might want to make a map showing the, you know, the deer paths of Waitley. Snowmobile paths, who knows? Right, yeah. right, uh, right, 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 right. The vaccinated and unvaccinated of Waitley. Yeah. Oh, boy. Where do they live? Yes. <laughs> we can't do a layer on the Native American sites because the Mass Historical Commission won't allow us. But we need to think that's one of the categories we really need to discuss to think of how, what can we do? What can we do? Exactly. Exactly. Um, And uh, yes. So. Okay. What other, so how else can, should we be asking Juliet to help us or what Juliet, what should we be asking you to do in in addition? (laughs) Yes, 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 yes. I'm going to give you this, this basic technical information that we, these to answer these questions that we brought up today. Um, I think that you should start a content outline, like, you know, possible map layer, possible sites just off the top of your head, doesn't have to be final or complete, and then run it by me. Um, Because I want to make sure that, I mean, one of the fascinating things that I'm not surprised happened that came up with when you showed me your sample content was, oh, this, these are two different animals. You know, one is a site, and one is a set of sites. And so I think it's good to have that back and forth. Okay. Okay, I think we can probably do that pretty quickly. Yeah, and it doesn't just draft to just, just to make sure that I'm aware of what you're thinking. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, well, I'll get back um, to you know. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, Alan and Allison, could, should we say goodbye to Juliet and stay on, stay on for Juliet, a moment? Juliet, have you heard the joke that goes around Deerfield about the, the dinosaur map? You know the one. You guys know that the, the, the docents or the guides at historic Deerfield, you probably know some of them. The media, before COVID anyway, the median age always seemed to be, and I'm not kidding, about 82. It's, it's yeah. quite a, a senior, senior population. Yes, And that has always been a sort of demographic there that's been interesting. And so when the PBMA started, got the grant money for the dinosaur trail, you know, (laughs) they had to start putting points, you know, to figure out where the points on the trail were going to be. My friend, Pat Yerkunis, who's died now, she says, well, I know where the first point should be. It should be the guide's lounge at Historic (laughs) (laughs) Deer. And that just it cracks me up still to think about that. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of dinosaurs in Deerfield, as it turns yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's a hot spot right there, the guys love. Right, right. All right. Well, it's lovely to see you all. Yeah. Thank you for your so help. Nice to see you, Thank awesome. you. We'll be in touch. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Do you want to talk some more? You want to make a plan? Uh, let's, I wondered, yes, we should make a plan. Um, either now or agree when we could, we could actually meet together now at this point, you know, if that would be helpful. Um, I can do that if you want. I just, I'm going to need to eat something while I talk to you because I haven't eaten all day and I'm dying. No, no. Um, what, well, the other thing we could do, you know, I picked out five topics which were kind of at random things that they were sort of things that interest me. Yeah. Um, Alan has a couple of topics and you had said it was the last time we met, Allison, you said something, oh, I could work on that. And I, I must, I don't know what I wrote it down on. I can't remember what it was. Do you remember what it was? No, because I, I think I just generally agreed. I, I'd be happy to work on something. I didn't. I don't think I offered a big idea right oh, okay. at that point. Okay. Okay. It, it might have had to do with nat- nat- natural history and the link to Native history, because I think that's a way we can include Native Americans in our presentation without pointing to the corner of Chestnut Plain and North Street and say there's a site here and don't go dig it. Right. Um, we right. could talk about resources that existed, you know, 400 years ago, 500 years ago, and how that, right, Alan, do you think we could do that? I mean, that links to the old roads issue, too. Um, 
the one that you're the old roads were some of the old roads the were on the site of the old paths, right? Thomas right, has, and I think that's fine to, to show the old paths. That would be fine. Um, but things like pine, you know, pitch pine plains that used to exist that don't exist now and how those were important or waterways or fishing, you know, fishing locations for mm -hmm. migratory, I don't know, you know, that kind of thing without sending people into anybody's backyard. Um, it's just a way of, of introducing that information that there were native people here. They did a bunch of different kinds of things. Um, and here are some of the spots that mattered. Mm -hmm. I think that would be great. Mm. Um, what, do you, what do you think? You know, lithic sources, Alan, we could do that. Yeah. We could do clay sources, you know. They're, yeah, they're all possibilities. We can I know it's very generalized, but, it, but I think it's important to get that part of the story in there. Right. And we're never right. going to be able to do better than that because we can't say, unless we do a dig someplace, we're not going to. Right. Well, maybe when right. they put the pump house into our property, maybe we'll discover a village site there. And, Right. It It'll possible but unlikely. But that's, that's, <laughs> who knows? And then those yeah, that's what they said down at that's what they said down at River Valley Market. And look what happened down there. Yeah. And and you know, I have to say, uh, I was just explaining this to somebody. The fact that the Northampton Historical Commission had blithely waived their prerogative to express an opinion about that project years before it got into the new, you know, five or six years ago, made me feel pretty good about, about what, we're a pretty small group, you know, I don't think we would have done that. I, I don't think we would have let it pass the way they did. I don't know how that'll happen. Um, but, um, I mean, they've had what, a, what a tornado it turned into, though. Right. You know, my friend Lori Sanders is co-director at Historic Northampton. If you bring up that subject, she just puts her hands in her hair and goes, oh, my God. I know, I know, but of course, probably when the Historical Commission waived their interest in it, um, it may have been before Historic Northampton. My goodness, you have a large refrigerator. <laughs> it's, it's quite impressive. It looks big, but it doesn't really hold anything. That's not what I was feeling. There's never anything to eat. <laughs> Um, um, yeah, that, that is totally possible because historic Northampton's really only been clicking along for three, four years. Right, exactly. It, it, it was revived. It existed it was, for a long time. But then it had folded. It's always existed, but it's had a very flat line pulse. Yeah. Right, right, right. So natural history stuff. Um, let's, um, it, the reason I was raising um, meeting together is that I'm wondering, is there anything we can look at online together that would be useful or is it still not is it not important well i don't i don't visit enough things to be able to say oh i saw this cool thing we should look at that no no i think um so mm -hmm. if we if we use google maps let's just assume she comes back and says yes we can put some layers in what yeah. would the what would the landing page be? I mean, somebody clicks hidden history. Would they land on a work a description of the project, or would they land on the map? Well, I hope it needs an introduction. So, yeah, it's not kind of introductory thing. That's one of the reasons I started with WordPress. I mean, you can write anything you want and link to anything, um, but, and it has its limits, but. Um, yeah, I um, it's a good prototyping thing too. Yeah, so I would probably benefit Alan from sitting with you sometime and having you show me what using WordPress means, like literally how you're doing it. Because <laughs> I, 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 I learn better by looking at things than by hearing somebody describe them to me. Um, so maybe we could do that sometime. Yeah, okay. Yeah, some place with internet content. All right, so why don't I, um, I'll pull together some version of an outline, some of which will be a little perhaps fanciful and, okay. and, and layers and send it to you both, assuming that you will both edit and improve it. <laughs> no. Yeah, and then um, maybe we can get together in the next couple of weeks. I think maybe, why don't I, let's, let's call a halt to the official meeting.
and I'll turn the recording off and we can talk about, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Sure.